Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. We are working on the Project Electric UTV today. And today we're hoping to actually have a running, driving electric UTV. Let me get you caught up to speed on what we've done so far and what we're doing today. So you guys have seen this UTV right here. It was a gas UTV. And if we look over here at this pile of junk, there you can see the old 200cc engine. You can see the solid rear end axle. You see the gas tank. And you'll also see a mess of wires. This is a fuel injected 200cc Chinese Honda knockoff engine. And it was in there. But now we've mounted this, which is our electric motor assembly and our electric rear axle onto the existing subframe. And today we're going to install all of this into there. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. So let me walk you through what all of this is. So starting up at the top here, this is a 3000 watt DC motor controller. It runs on 60 volts. Our motor is a 60 volt motor. So it'll take 60 volts coming in and then it'll feed that out to the motor to drive the motor. There are a number of connectors here which will connect up to gas pedals, ignition switches, and that sort of thing. Then over here, we have our 60 volt 60 amp hour lithium battery. Now this is a very small form factor and that's because I need to put it inside this Jeep somewhere so the best place for it was right where the gas tank was. So we're gonna be mounting that in there. Now this has a typical connector that you would have for a battery disconnect and if we power it on, you can see we have about 66.2 volts currently. To charge this, you just plug this in to a 120 volt outlet and it will charge the battery. There is a BMS built into this. That's a battery monitoring system. And this is more or less water resistant. You can't submerge it, but it can get wet and it'll be fine. All this other stuff is just systems to help make this Jeep work. So we have this guy right here. This is a DC to DC converter, as you can see here. So it'll take 24 to 60 volts in and put 12 volts out. That's gonna be important to run all of our lights, all of our switches, any kind of auxiliary, anything that we wanna run on here, we need 12 volts. So this will take the 60 volts from this and it will pump 12 volts out from here. Next we have our fuse and distribution block. And if I pull the cover off, you can see, so we're gonna run our 12 volts into this, which will allow us to fuse all of our wiring properly. We also have this hookup wire kit, which comes with a number of colored wires. As you can see here, black, red, white, blue, yellow, green. This is gonna be important to keep our wiring all kind of under control. I've got a number of spade connectors and ring connectors. This again will be important for interfacing into a lot of the wiring and stuff that's here. So these lights, these were already all here. I'd like to keep using them so I can use those connectors and that wiring to wire all that back up. I have a number of tie wraps here and some high gauge wire so that I can connect our battery up to our controller properly. Now that's more or less everything that needs to get installed into this Jeep. Now, going through exactly how this is all getting wired together and everything is gonna be kind of tedious and a little bit annoying. I've actually been putting it off because I knew I wanted to film this video while I do it, but it slows things down so significantly that I think the best way for me to do this is a quick montage of key parts that I install, and then I will go through the final install. I'll show you exactly where I put everything and the wiring connections that were made. So this is not gonna be a tutorial of such or as such, but it will be a kind of, here's what you see, and now here it is in the Jeep, and then hopefully here it is actually functioning. I'm really excited to make this thing work today because summer is here. I need this thing ready to go so we can get it out to the lake and start using it. So today, 
I'm hoping, fingers crossed, by the end of this video, I will have a running electric UTV. Stay tuned for the update because I can't predict the future, so I don't even know yet. But you'll know in just a quick camera swipe. So it's taken a couple hours. My hands are dirty. I've been crawling all around underneath this thing, but the core wiring should be done. I should be able to turn this on. I should be able to see the wheels turn and I should be able to use the gas pedal. I don't have the reverse switch hooked up yet or any of the auxiliary stuff, but I really wanna see if this is gonna work. So we're gonna fire it up right now and see what happens. All right, we're going to plug this in and hope nothing bad happens. Make sure polarity's match. Okay, that's a good sign. When I turn the battery on, we're at 66.2 volts. Now I should be able to, so uh, let me run you through at least a little bit here. I do have it jacked up on jack stands so that these wheels spin free. That way, if it does like try to take off when I turn it on, I'm not gonna drive right through the garage door. I should be able to flip the switch on and have power. Ho, 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 ho. Okay. Check this out. <laughs> Okay, I got the gas pedal. I'm going to push that. And it spins. Now that sound you hear is the brakes, which is going to be fine. Now let's see if my speed switch here actually plays with the speed. So try it there. There's that setting. Here's the middle. And then we'll go to the top. Okay, speed switch is working, but since I don't have reverse, I'm gonna see if I can use that speed switch as my reverse switch. So let me shut the power off. Make sure that that's working properly. Okay, so with the key switch off, I got nothing. Key switch on, I got something. I'll have to hook up this light to turn on when the thing's on so that we know. But let's try swapping this wire, see if I get reverse. So all I've done is unhooked this wiring, which is for the speed selector, and plugged it into this, which is the forward reverse selector. I just wanna see if it's gonna work. Let's turn that on, and then I don't know what would be what. That's off. Perfect. Okay, so this switch in this position is reverse. Like that and in that position it's now forward Ugh. now i should check the brakes while i've got it up the brakes don't appear to be working very good i probably have air in them but the front brakes work so I think, I think we're on to the road test. So I'm gonna strap this battery down cause it's just still loose. Then we'll do a road test.
as you could see, it drove, it drove around our whole block through the back alley. And now it's time to see how we hooked this thing all up. So let's go for a quick tour here. As you can see, this is where we mounted the controller. This is a 3000 watt controller. There's a rat's nest of wires here, which we do need to clean up, but I got to do final wiring on all the auxiliary lights and all of that. But the big thing is we've got the power wire coming over to the battery, which now reads 64.9 volts. I have no idea what the capacity or range of this is going to be. I am a little worried that it's at 64.9 right now, which seems like it's losing a lot of power. I've run the three wires for the motor down here, and then we'll just go under the Jeep. Underneath the Jeep here, those wires come to here. There's a little raceway here that it's built for and then it runs along that raceway over to here. Once we're at the back, you can see it, it comes out of that raceway and then ties into the motor itself right there. The motor is quite cool, so that's not a problem at all. And that's really it. If we come up here, again, a little bit more work to be done here, but I've wired up this switch so that this switch turns it on and off. When I turn that on, that's now on. Turn it off, that's now off. This is currently acting as my forward reverse switch, and that's just because I don't have the forward and reverse switch hooked up yet. So I do need to figure out how to transfer this over to work. I'm gonna make this my forward reverse switch. So I'm gonna work on that now just to make that sure that's all good. But otherwise, this thing drives. So we will do one final video where I show you all the lights and everything all hooked up, but this conversion has been pretty straightforward. Uh, you've seen all the videos, you've seen what we've done, how we've done it. It's dead quiet now. It's exactly what I was looking for, something super quiet that will not disturb the community. So I'll have to clean it up, get it all ready. That'll be in a future video. But today, functionally, we got it working. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.